Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the horror guru, and I'm Count Jackula. And today we're going to talk about Titan or Titane. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it, and I'm sure there's someone who speaks French in the comment section below, laughing their asses off at our terrible pronunciation. But whatever it is, Titane to Ten, it is the latest film from the director of Raw, continuing the theme of being a a weird ass movie about a woman dealing with weird body horror issues in a strange context. <laughs> Let's start out how the movie does. This movie is about a girl who is sex only sexually satisfied by cars. Now, we don't mean she has to have sex in a car. I mean, she has to fuck a car. Like, like, like here's your car. Yeah. She's got to fuck it. Yep. You know? Yep. She gotta ride that rough she gotta ride that drive train. Yep, that's 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 where we kind of start this movie is is with a character who is very much not neurotypical. Um I oh, don't yeah. think she's from the from the get-go. I don't know if she's autistic or, or what she is, but she's obviously she she's very, very weirdly antisocial and uh she has a head injury that has given her a metal plate in her head and likes to fuck cars. That's, yeah, so she's like now park car. And she's also a serial killer. Um, yeah, yeah, there's no explanation for that part. She's just a serial killer. Now, let me tell you, we've just told you all this up front because this is basically the stuff you learn in the first 20 minutes of the movie. Yeah. There is a good like 80 or so more minutes of shit that we're gonna leave for the spoiler section that gets weirder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how to put it? It starts about off with a woman becoming sexually attracted to cars, and then it just keeps getting weirder. It just keeps going, and and it goes in directions that you do not expect. Like this is legitimately a movie where I had no idea where we were going. Yeah, no clue at any point at, in the movie. No clue. Every time you think, "Oh, I know where this movie is going," no, nope. no, no. I'll tell you one thing. This is the movie that should be called Holy Motors. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I know I mentioned an allusion to French people in the comment section laughing at us, but this is also a French language film. Uh, so if you watch this movie, you're gonna have to watch it with subtitles. I don't think there's a dubbed version, but honestly, I, I don't- there, There'd be no help for you there. I feel like a dubbed version would just make it even more hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, like getting a dubbed version of this would be getting like a dubbed version of Tetsuo the Iron Man. Good luck. Yeah. Like that's not gonna help. This is like a weird combination of Tetsu, Tetsuo the Iron Man, Maniac, and Crash, the David yeah. Cronenberg movie. Yeah. It's like a weird combination of them while also being its own While also own having thing. a female lead. Yeah, yeah. And also being about love, kinda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. it, it's also about love in a really weird and ass backwards way. Um, but needless to say, I dug the hell out of this movie. <laughs> This, yeah. is, this is my kind of weird ass, what the fuck art house like film. Like it's- Yeah. Now there has been a little bit of a, uh, a hoopla over the movie. If you are, if you pay attention to such things, but we'll deal with that in the spoilers because- Yeah. Uh? It, it's, it, it's a weird thing to talk about. And, and like, like obviously, when we get to the spoiler section, we'll go more into it. But it's it's one of those things where I don't necessarily agree with the controversy, but I see where they're coming from. I, yeah, I see where they got it. But I know. don't necessarily agree with that particular take of the movie, on the movie. Yeah, well, we'll get <laughs> to that on spoilers. So if you're like, I don't know what you're fucking talking about, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about it. But if you watch the movie, have opinions, then come back. Um, this movie is like, like also just kind of like, about trying to find a place you belong. Yes. Um, like at its core, you have this character who is very antisocial, does not get along with most people, and in fact, hates most people, um, kills people for seemingly no goddamn reason other than just to do it, um, likes cars a little too much, <laughs> um, um, but like has no place she fits in. Like she doesn't fit in at the, uh, at the car shows that she goes to at the beginning of the movie. She doesn't fit in at home with her family because her dad like 
thinks she's really weird, and she and, is. And she is. And I mean, she is. Fair. Um, and uh, she's a woman, so she gets random guys hitting on her that she doesn't get along with that are just creepers. Yeah. Um, and, and she's just kind of looking for a place where, you know, she feels like she fits. Um, and she, over the course of the movie, finds a place. I don't know, like, when we get to the spoiler section, we'll talk more about it. I don't know whether or not it's the place she finally fits by the end, but yeah. she finds so a place. I, look, I'm gonna also going to put this. With that information, you are putting together a scenario in your <laughs> head that I guarantee you does not exist in the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Holy fucking crap. This every gets weird. Every time I tried to like think of like, oh, this is where this movie's going to go next if it follows the normal beat. It didn't follow the normal beat. Not in the slightest. No, no. no. It, it, it had to get weirder. <laughs> you know, like it, it gets it gets wild. Um, yeah, uh, this is probably the weirdest movie I've seen since like We Are the Flesh. Yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, yeah, it's not as overtly disturbing as We Are the Flesh because that has like yeah. You know, that story has incest in it and like genitals. This one doesn't have genitals. No, no. I would say We Are the Flesh is more disturbing, mainly because of the incest. Yeah. But this film does get pretty this disturbing. This film is weirder. It's weirder and it does get disturbing in its own right, particularly when it gets to the body horror portions of the movie, which we'll talk more about when we get to the spoilers, because what she's going through is a spoiler. So. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like gnarly body horror involving like motor oil and car shit. It's weird. Yeah. Well, like, like think Tetsuo the Iron Man, but in a weird direction. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other thing I really liked about the way the movie was filmed, if we're talking about the more normal horror elements, anytime trauma was in, anytime trauma was inflicted, or specifically the main character was inflicting trauma upon herself. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh it's, man, it's like, hard to look at. Whoa, it's hard to look at. They're like, like, I'm like, bravo, holy crap, that was that was upsetting. You're, we're, this was a case where we're sitting there, like a room full of hardened horror fans who watch gory and messed up horror movies all the time, and more often than not, cheer at the gore and stuff like that. Yeah. Every time something would happen in this movie, particularly to the main character or what the main character would do to other people, you get the whole, a whole room of hardened gore, hand, gore hounds just going, oh, oh shit, whoa, <laughs> oh, whoa, that yeah. just happened. Yeah, and Holy the actions shit. themselves were not that unusual, but the way yeah. it was done was super fucking effective. <laughs> Like, like, I, I, I am not, I'm not gonna lie. This movie, like, is definitely up there with like, um, uh, Fried Berry and Werewolves Within as one of my favorite movies I saw so far this year. Oh yeah, like I, I yeah. love this movie. Um, <laughs> this is like it's also probably even even considering Werewolves Within, like this is probably also in a fucked up way, the funniest of them. It's all, yeah, it is really funny in its own way. And like, at first I wasn't sure if like us laughing at the movie was like an intentional thing. Um, but I was like reading interviews with the director and like, like, like she talks about how she was trying to inject humor and all that stuff. So it, yeah. the, the humor is intentional. Yeah. You are supposed to laugh at it. Yeah, um, there are a few jokes, but there's a lot of humor. You're also supposed to cringe and you're also supposed to cry at certain moments. And like legitimately, the movie makes you go through all those emotions. Like, it, yeah, yeah, it's it was funny because it was so funny every time, like in particularly like the the, the self mutilation scenes, because there are a few of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, like every time that shit started, that's when I cringe the hardest. Oh, it's yeah. Like, oh, 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 yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm going like, you know, it's not the bloodiest thing I've seen happened. It's not even the most fucked up thing that happens in this movie, yeah. but just the way it was done. Yeah. yeah like the buildup to every like punch or stab or whatever. Yeah. It's just like, ah, ah, oh God, when's this gonna stop? Is it over? Oh, okay, it's not over yet. All right, we're still going. I largely <laughs> saw this movie as a weird, like, okay, a couple things about the movie. First off, one of the thoughts I had about the movie is that it definitely felt like a director exploring a concept to its most extreme. Yeah. Like they had this really cool, weird idea and we're just gonna explore it and see how far we can take this. Um, and they do. 
<clears throat> but my second thought of the movie after having stewed on it after watching it a couple days ago um, is that at, at ultimately this is a movie that to me, what I took from it as a piece of art is as a metaphor for being a social outcast. Um, yeah, uh, specifically being a female social yeah. outcast. And, and like trying to find your place in this fucked up world that is hostile to you and is not interested in your interests. Yeah. Um, and like, obviously it's a very extreme metaphor for that, but like raw, which was basically a metaphor for puberty and uh, uh, being a young woman coming of age uh, in the modern world, that was also a very extreme metaphor. So obviously- Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but unlike but unlike raw, which is about the, about, um, about adolescent self-discovery, puberty yeah. self-discovery. Through is, cannibalism. Through cannibalism. <laughs> this is about a person who knows what they are, but is trying to figure out a place to fit in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because like- you know, just, It's a good, It would. it's definitely a good companion flick with Raw. Oh yeah. I think that there needs to be a third one. I don't know what the exact subject <laughs> would be, but like there needs to be a trilogy. Okay, I hope the next one is about being an older woman. Oh, that would work. Like yeah. we had one about a woman who's like in her 20s, 30s right now. Yeah. And then, then Raw was about like puberty. Yeah. Um, next one should be about an older woman. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or like middle age middle or age something. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fine too. You know, just someone like, just keep going like each experience of being a woman at this age, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, that, no, that'd be rad. You know, like that. that's the thing. I can totally, I'm looking, I look forward to whatever movies uh, she makes next because uh, you can definitely feel the auteur touch in both, oh, both yeah. of these movies. Like you watch this movie and when I realized it was from the director of Raw, it made total sense because it feels thematically like in line with that movie. Yeah, well, what's, what's her, how do you pronounce her name again? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm gonna put her name right here in there because I realize I don't actually know how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, if you are a French uh, viewer, then feel free to laugh at us in the comments below because I know that we're- we Yeah, 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 or try to, or try to um, phonetically tell us how the name yeah. is said. I do know that the title of the movie, Titane, is uh, uh, essentially titanium in, uh, yeah. in French, um, which makes sense given that, that she has a thing for cars and she's got a metal, metal plate, plate in her head. head. I, yeah. I feel like there's also, there's an additional level to that one that we're probably- Oh, there probably at. is. There you probably know? is. Like, like I, if a French viewer, feel, feel free, if there's a French viewer out there to like, give us your take on the movie down there, because I, I guarantee there's probably some cultural stuff that we're missing too. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's the same thing, like whenever we watch like Japanese movies and like, like we can interpret yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, but it's easier <laughs> for us to get like information about, we live in San Francisco, so it's easier to get information yeah. about Japanese culture than it's about French true, culture. True, true. <laughs> um, but I highly, highly recommend this movie. If you like weird, art house cinema, if you like weird ass, fucked up foreign films, if you like horror movies about the female experience, about being a woman, um, then, then you definitely need to check this one out and give it a watch because it is totally worth a watch. Now I will say this, it is not for the faint of heart or the squeamish. It is, Whoa, no. it is gnarly, Whoa. it is fucked up. I don't recall there being any animals killed in the movie. No, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't even remember if there are any animals in the movie at all. I don't think there are. Yeah. Um, but there is definitely a whole lot of people that have bad oh, yeah. things happen to oh, them. Oh yeah, 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 there's a lot of people like, that get fucked it, up. The, she, what, there's a point where she goes on like a little mini murder spree and kills like four or five people in a row. Um, and it is bloody and gnarly and hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, there's a huge comedy of errors that happens with it. It's kind of like, you know, like you know, on Scream, like like the, the slasher killer is always like stumbling around trying to kill Yeah, her. yeah. Like she is not a graceful murderer. <laughs> like she's- Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit closer to Ghostface because yeah. Ghostface is always supposed to be like a real person. Exactly. But there's also like an element kind of like the movie Maniac where you kind of empathize with her a little bit while things are happening, except in this scene. In this scene, she just kind of does it to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because this is just, this is like, okay, I'm just gonna kill this person. God damn it, somebody saw me. All right, I'm gonna have to kill that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many people are in this house now? And it becomes you know? this comedy of errors of like, like, like it's it, it's it's like watching a cartoon where like 
Roadrunner is constantly yeah, trying, but like like or, or uh, Wiley Coyote, Wiley Coyote yeah. is constantly being foiled at every turn, <laughs> and it's it's really it's really fucked. But here's the thing: it manages to skirt this line where it's fucked up. So you're cringing and going, ooh, the entire time, every time she hurts someone. But it's also hilarious, so you're kind of laughing, but you also really feel bad for all her victims. Yeah. Because none of them deserve it. Oh, except for like a except couple. Maybe the first one, but then oh, yeah. it keeps going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 one thing, like Okay, the first one, definitely. The first one, he deserves it. He deserved he may not deserve to be like murdered how brutally he is but he if he lost <laughs> a finger you wouldn't you've been like yeah that's yeah that's fair there's a couple later on that is questionable whether or not they deserve it but there's an argument that could be made but like the 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 four or five that are killed in that one little spree none of them do. no none of them <laughs> none yeah of them. <laughs> you know because they were just sort of like hey you know hey hot girl why don't you have sex in our house and it's not like <laughs> a trick or nothing it's just literally oh i'm just gonna look to her house and fuck your girlfriend and that turns out there are like five more people there and they're not and it's not even like ooh let me get touchy with you it's like <laughs> well no it was the, the idea is that a bunch of us were gonna have sex in this house like that was yeah. that was the idea yep yep <laughs> You know, <laughs> and no one was even like forcing themselves on her or anything. No, no, you know? nothing like that. No, no, no. It's just she just like I was reading with the director who said that like she wanted to make a movie about someone who kills for no real reason. Like the, it's not like a motivated killing. It's just they just do it to do it. Um, though I will argue that I do feel like there is a partial reason. And like it's very obvious she kills either in self-defense or because she doesn't fit in. Like, yeah. it's, it's very... Yeah, but it's not like, but it's not like related to... Yeah. It's not like Jason Voorhees. No, like, no, oh, no. He was drowned as a child. Now he was resurrected you're, as a monster. You're yeah. having premarital sex. I must murder you. No, 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 no. It's not like yeah, that. Yeah, it's nothing like that at all. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I highly recommend Tatane. It is uh, currently available on various streaming platforms to rent. I do not think any of them have it uh, just on the platform yet to uh, to watch for free. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to fork out some money to rent, rent it's, it. It's worth it though. It's totally worth it, and I loved it. Yeah, what was it? Will we pay like five dollars or something? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's something like that. Yeah, uh, I'll put it, I'll put the um, the just watch screen right here, and the just watch screen will have like the various prices on the various platforms. It, it ranges from like five dollars to twenty dollars depending upon the platform. Basically. Got it. And uh, with all that said, let us move on to the spoilers. Well, where to begin? Um, I know. I bet you're wondering, like, what the hell could they spoil? They just told us about this whole murder. We didn't spree. tell you shit. Okay, so that murdering spree is like literally the 20 minute mark of the movie, right? Yeah. Like, this is about the point where like we have the inciting incident, and the inciting incident in this case is that during this murdering spree, she, uh, one of her victims, gets get, uh, escapes. Yeah. Um. So basically, she go. She ends up on the run. Uh, because the cops know who she is and they know what, her, what she looks like and that she's a serial killer and they're trying to get her. And this is where the movie properly begins. This is after yeah. we've already seen her get in a car accident and get the metal plate in her head. We've seen her go to a car show and do like a sexy dance on a car because she really loves yeah, cars. Yeah, because she's like a, yeah, she's like a, uh, uh, one of those girls that goes Model. to like, yeah, a model. Yeah. A model and dancer that goes to these like car shows and like dances semi nude on top of the car. Yeah. It's essentially like 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 a booth babe of yeah. cars. Yeah. Um, but it's obvious that she's not there for any other reason other than she has the hearts for cars. Um, and we've seen her kill a guy who tries to force himself on her. And then after killing the guy, takes a shower and then goes and fucks a car. And I know yeah. you're wondering, like, how the fuck do you fuck a car? Apparently the car fucks back. I don't know. Yeah, how it yeah, no, like <laughs> that, that was the moment that broke my brain, which is like, you're like, you, you just got the, the, the shot of the car. She gets in, there's some moaning yep. and you're okay. And then all of a sudden the car by itself, and you know it's by itself because she's in the back seat, starts doing the low rider. Yeah. And yeah. You're, I, that moment broke me where I was like, what? Yeah. yeah. What? 
Yeah. What? Like, I thought she was like, I, I thought we were supposed to imagine that she was like on the, like, drive on the fucking gear shift knob or yeah, something. Yeah. Oh, but no, no. It, it's like she's strapped in the car. Like it's a BDSM fucking sex scene. And like, we don't see what's happening down there, but we know the car is putting something in her. Yeah. You know, and it's she's doing like something. The car. And here's the thing. When this happens, you're sitting there trying to figure out, is this literally happening or is this just in her head? But then something else happens in the movie that other people become aware of that makes it clear that no, it literally happened. And that's that she becomes pregnant. She becomes yeah. pregnant and starts exhibiting signs of she's going to give birth to like a car baby. Yeah. Because she, start, like she of, starts lactating motor oil. Yeah. And her stomach starts having like these metal like like extrusions coming from it. Yeah. Like as the she gets flesh wider. Of her belly like opens up. Yeah. Like you could see this metal poking through. Exactly. And you're like, what? And by the end of the movie, she literally gives birth to a half metal baby. She gives birth to Tetsuo the Iron Baby. Yeah, basically, yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Tetsuo the Iron Baby. Like, she gives birth to this. So, and, and there's another person who witnesses the baby and holds it so you know. It's real. It's real. Yeah. The baby's real, therefore the car was real, therefore the sex was real. Yep. Yeah. Um, now that's the meat of the journey, so yeah. to say. But that's not even the weirdest part of this. I know, like, like, yeah. like the car baby, not the weirdest part of this movie. No, 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 no. The weirdest part of this movie is that, okay, alongside her being wanted by the police, uh, there's been these news reports throughout the movie about like this m- missing person. It's like like the son of a fireman went missing. And, yeah, like, but like 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. And like they're looking for him and there's like police sketches of what he would look like now, uh, years later. And she realizes that with a little adjustments to herself, she can look like that son. So she cuts her hair, she fucks up her nose so that it looks a little bit more like the, the picture. Um, and just genuinely tries to pass herself off as the son in order to hide from the police. Yeah. Um, as uh, assuming a different identity, essentially doing that thing um, that you see in like episodes of Law and Order SVU where like, hey, I have shown up to be your long lost daughter who went missing uh, years ago. Oh, wait, I'm a con artist who's just trying to scam you out of money. Yeah, she's kind of doing that thing, except she's not trying to scam him out of money so much as just hide. You yeah. Know? And the fireman, you know, falls for it and brings her home uh, and uh treats her like his his son um and <laughs> and and everyone's ar- around him is already kind of hip to the fact that something's wrong mm-hmm. like they're like i don't know about this chief you yeah know? like her like, like the people that the other firemen uh because he's the fire chief uh the other other firemen already kind of like are suspicious of her um, and her, his his wife just straight up knows that it's not their son. Yeah. Like straight up knows and even walks in and realizes that like, oh, it's a girl and she's pregnant. And it's just like, and and like the wife is just like, well, you make my husband happy. You take care of him. You yeah. make him happy. And 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 I won't tell him, you know, and all yeah. that stuff. Uh, this part of the movie is the weirdest part of the movie because the way this develops is eventually the, f- okay, first off you have the fireman who uh, has body image issues because he's getting older. Yeah. Uh, He's not the man he used to be. He can't do the pull-ups he used to do. He's not as strong as he used to be. And he's not handling it well because he was the big, strong fireman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now he's like pushing 70 and and shit. Uh, So he regularly, nightly injects his ass with steroids. Actually, I figured out it's not technically steroids. Oh, what is it? It's testosterone. Oh, okay. All right. There you go. He injects himself with testosterone. Yeah. Which is a um, thing that old guys sometimes do. Which is an element of body horror. I don't think people are expecting when they walk into this movie. Because no. You, you, no. He, like he you reuses needles and his ass is all gnarly Ooh. from like, like being bruised from how many yeah. times he's injected himself. Um, yeah. And well, then, oh, it's specifically when he goes after like the used needles. Like, yeah, oh, God. God. Yeah. And you're like, dude, I know that the like thing has probably only been in you, but yeah. 
dude. Oh, it's it's oh man. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, so you, on top of her body horror, you have his body horror with all with all that stuff. Um, but then the story gets even fucking weirder because there's a point. There is a point in which one of the other firemen decide to confront their boss about the fact that he knows that, wait, this chick is the chick that's wanted for murder. Yeah. He figures it out. Like he he puts it together. And the uh, fire chief, uh, upon learning of this news, stages an event that causes the other firemen to be exploded. Yeah. Basically, while they're doing a fire exercise with like live fire in like an actual en environment, uh, he hands him this canister that he knows is going to explode uh, with enough heat pressure. Yeah, it's like a propane tank. But the other guy trusts his boss and doesn't put that together. And it explodes. It, yeah, kills him. Kills the guy. And at this point, like, like we're really far into the movie at this point. And at this point is when you start to realize that the fire chief knows it's not his son and doesn't care. Because as far as he's concerned, it's his son anyway. Yeah. She's his son anyway. Yeah. However, he hasn't put together the last bit. Yes. He has not put together that she is pregnant. Yeah. Or a girl. Or a girl. Or a girl. Yeah. He might suspect, but like he's in denial. You know, and then he finds that out and has a whole existential crisis once he finds out it's a girl. Um, yeah. Which happens at the same time that he realizes she's pregnant. Yeah. But here's the other weird part of this movie. Um, there's a there's a part of their relationship that you start to wonder, okay, here's the thing. I know that European people, uh, especially European men, are allowed to be a lot more intimate with one another in a non-sexual- Yeah, in a heterosexual way. Yeah, yeah in a non-sexual, non, in, in a non-sexual platonic sense. Um, so like, the way he kisses his son, not super weird. But there's a point where I feel like that threshold starts to shift. And it start, I started to get the vibe that he wanted to fuck his own son. <laughs> yeah. And then that point is later confirmed when it seems like they're about to sleep with one another. Like there's like a point where it feels like they're about to just straight up sleep with yeah. one another. And yeah. it gets really fucking weird, but it stopped and cut short by him having an exist existential crisis about the whole thing because, okay, like he had, because who would he had just kind of reached this point where he accepted it, it's his son, but now it's this woman, and now he wants to fuck this woman. Oh my god, I can't handle this. Yeah. Um, but then she starts to give birth. She breaks. She her water breaks. Her motor oil. Her motor, breaks. Yeah. <laughs> it's all black and everything. And gives birth to the child and dies on the de on the on the birth bed and he takes it like he's going to raise the new son on his own yeah and it ends with him holding the 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 motor like tetsuo the iron baby <laughs> credits yeah while he's That's crying how the movie ends while he's crying um, and so this movie's about this, like, like you'd think this movie's just about this, like, serial killer girl and, like, we're gonna explore her, like, maniac or something like that, where we follow her and eventually follow her to her demise. No, it's not that. Like, you watch her, like, go on her murder spree, uh, kill her parents and escape, and then try to find a place where she can hide. But also this entire time she's looking for a place where she belongs. And she eventually kind of finds it with this guy. Cause there's a point later on in the movie where she can escape. She can yeah. just leave. And she almost does, but she's sitting on this bus and listening to like these misogynistic assholes just like completely like talk about like integrating ways about the women they slept with and stuff. Integ degrading ways? Integrating ways. Yeah, oh, integrating ways. Okay. Integrating ways. I thought you said, Integrating ways. In a, no, integrating. No. In like, degrading ways yeah. um, about the women they've slept with. And she, something like clicks in her and she just decides to go back to the fireman guy and be his son um, because she's just happier in that world. 
Yeah. Like, like she's just happier there. Like maybe, maybe being a guy is a little bit like easier than, than being a woman the way yeah. she was. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff being explored there, which actually does uh, touch upon like, the controversy surrounding the movie because there's like some people who've interpreted this movie as the main character uh being an allegory for trans women i i yeah i'm not so sure about that. reading what the director has said about the movie i do not get the impression that trans women were really on the mind while making the movie um that doesn't mean that there isn't stuff there that you can read into and that you can interpret oh yeah it'd be, it'd be really it's really um, easy to read into yeah. If you see it as a trans thing, I can see how like certain things that happen in the movie would be seen as problematic. Like there's a scene uh, at one point where uh, like all the firemen are having like their big bro dude rave, um, and they and <laughs> which they, is the gayest looking thing. Yeah. Ever. Oh yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> super gay. It's super gay. They um, turned a bro down into o down. Yeah. Yeah. And they get the uh, uh, they get the they get her to uh, get up on uh, one of the fire trucks and dance. Um, and she, under the guy that she is, she is seen as the son at that point. They, they haven't quite put together that it's not the son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're expecting her to like thrash, headbang, or stage dive. Yeah, or yeah, or do something. Yeah. And she ends up doing one of her sexy dances that she did at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, because she's on top of a vehicle. Um, and it is a, a scene that is simultaneously uncomfortable, but it's also uh, like a moment where she's kind of being herself. But it's also a scene that you're kind of laughing at because of the fireman's reaction. It's so, yeah, yeah. So if you see it as a trans allegory, like in the fact that we're kind of laughing, like you can see how that might make people uncomfortable. So I, I can see where they're coming from. But my thing is, is I, I don't see this as a movie trying to be a trans allegory. Like it seems much more about an allegory. The allegory seems to be much more the difference between the way men and women are treated. Well, yeah, like obviously she's exploring some of the gender stuff, yeah. right? Like yeah. the way men versus women are yeah, treated. Yeah, there's definitely a gender allegory. Yeah. But like, I see it as way more of a Mrs. Doubtfire situation. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, not yeah. trying to say anything about transness, but like kind of, kind of by accident yeah. wanders into that territory exactly. without thinking about it. Yeah. Exactly. So. Maybe a little problematic there, uh, depending upon how you interpret it, but I didn't necessarily read it as a trans allegory. Either. Yeah, because well, like you've always, well, like with, with Mrs. Downfire, the, the, the problem is kind of this, which is if you don't feel like it's passing, the movie is passing judgment. No, no. Because well, the know? thing is, is the, it's, it's just a little too odd. The thing is, is the movie does not pass judgment on her. In fact, you're supposed to empathize. Yeah, with her yeah, totally. A lot of the time, and you do, you know, like the, 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 that, that's what makes the moments where she does something really horrible all the more shocking. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like Maniac, right? You watch Maniac and you grow to kind of like Joe, but every time you see him do something awful to a woman, it's like, holy shit. shit like, you yeah. know, it's like Jesus fucking Christ. There's like the two sides to this guy, you know? But but like, I, I it, you're very much supposed to empathize with her and her experience. And like, I don't see it as like, necess like necessarily as she, oh, she was a boy. And so she, therefore she should always be a boy or anything like that. I don't see it as that as so much as being a boy was easier for her in this instance. But the moment she would have been allowed to be a girl again, she would. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 definitely. Like this you is, know? this is, she's not, actually a boy it's like she is disguising her gender it's like mrs doubtfire he becomes mrs doubtfire as a way to get to his kids yeah but if he could do it without that he yeah would, he probably would yeah you know? because that's the only that's the only reason to do it exactly yeah yeah i feel like that that is very similar and whether it whether you think that that is a pro or a con for the movie like that that's up to you, but yeah. that's definitely where I feel the movie was. I would definitely be interested, uh, since we do have quite a few trans viewers who watch both of us. Uh, feel free to, like, if you've seen the movie, to give us your take in the comment yeah. section below. Like, I, I definitely can't, like, I'm, def we're, I'm defending the movie, but I definitely am not going to judge people for seeing, saying, like, wait, was I saying something yeah. weird about trans people? It's like, okay, I, I'm not, I don't think so, but you're not stupid for you, you, wondering you might have you, know? you might have stumbled onto something yeah you might know. have stumbled onto you something know? but like you know you're not you're, you're not out of bounds for wondering i don't think this is a sleepaway camp situation where like i, well, I love, even that you're supposed to sympathize with well, it yeah 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 you know? oh, i love sleepaway camp and you're supposed to sympathize with it but sleepaway camp definitely 
requires you to be shocked at the concept of a trans woman. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, this one doesn't as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not even like a situation where the character legitimately is supposed to be trans. I don't think they're supposed to be in this context. It just kind of weirdly stumbles into that uh, gender queer territory. Um, at least that's that's the way I interpreted it. Like, feel free to let us know what you thought below. Um, especially if you're a French trans person, because I have no idea if there's like some things that people are picking up on, like from a trans per yeah, French yeah, perspective. Yeah, no clue. Like a French no perspective clue. that might might like like if there's like a way that like French turfs like <laughs> operate, you know, that like God. I'm not aware of, and oh. that's that, and that's present in this movie. Then I would I would like to, I would like to know that because if I don't want to like accidentally like praise a turf movie you know what i mean well, like, we don't want to be another like max landis situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? like, so if there's like we're a, like oh we love the movie but you know so if there's like a particular way french turf rhetoric is like exemplified in this movie then definitely let us know we, we yeah 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 we'd like to be aware of that <laughs> yeah but anyway now that we've got that part out of the way yeah like i I dug the hell out of this movie. I liked its weirdness. I sympathize so hard with the character and it horrified me. It shocked me. It made me laugh. Yeah. You know, and it showed me some, showed me some shit I'd never seen before. Yeah, like, it's nice when you can see a movie that you're like, I've never seen a movie like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the car fucking, I've seen Crash and I've seen like, like, you know, those, those well, the car fucking in Crash is not like this. No. Or like the scene, like like that that one commercial of the cars fucking. Oh, in Southland Tales. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've seen that, but I've never seen car fucking like this before. Um, I've also never seen a car baby baby pregnancy in a movie before. That I definitely like. Never the closest seen. thing I can come to is Tetsuo the Iron Man, but that's not like a birthing thing. Yeah, he didn't like give birth to shit. No, Matt, you know, <laughs> like, like there's. I mean, another guy comes in and merges with him for some reason. Exactly. But. I've also never seen someone successfully create a romance between a character and someone they see as their son. <laughs> not a romance. No, well, then here's the thing. Not this way. No. Not no, this way. Not where there's actually a degree of real tenderness involved. Yeah. Not this way. Um, and actually make it work and like you're cringing and it's fucked up, but it's also weirdly touching. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know how else to say, like this movie takes you to weird places. <laughs> oh yeah, you're you know. definitely gonna be swimming in the fucking currents of the unconscious with this <laughs> one. <laughs> you know, damn. I know uh, it was great. I, I thought it was I, great. I, no, uh, my only thing is I wish I could have seen this on the big screen. Like <laughs> the car fucking on the big screen. Holy shit. You know? Well, if we did that, there definitely would have been a moment in, where in a theater, I would have been, you would have heard me go, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, by the way, my fellow Gorehounds, I've actually been experimenting with uh, different sound settings and a new uh, sound editing program. So, uh, uh, let us know how you think uh, the vlogs have been sounding this last uh, couple of vlogs because uh, I've been I've been experimenting with the sound and it sounds a little bit different, but I I, it, I think it sounds a little better, but I want to make sure it does to the audience. So uh, let us know below uh, if you think that these videos are sounding good because I've been experimenting with Audition and we kind of realized that we were actually using our uh, sound equipment wrong for a while um, uh, because uh, Turns out it can record two different uh, takes, one a little quiet and one a little loud. Yeah. And we didn't know we could do that. So we were always like leaning on the loud thing. And so now that we can record a little louder and a little softer, so that way if we clip, we can go to the quieter one. It's allowing us to uh, uh, use a little bit, uh, record a little bit louder than we normally do, which makes the our voices yeah, the overall, more clear. Yeah, the overall fidelity is better. Exactly. Um, so let us know if you think the sound quality um, in this vlog, the lamb vlog, and the uh, night teeth vlog, if it sounds a little better or worse than the uh, sound quality in the previous vlog, because uh, this is my first time using Audition to clean up audio in our first in our first few times using uh, this particular audio setting. So we'll see how it sounds. 
<laughs> Ooh, la, 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 la. <laughs> exactly. And uh, with all that, is there anything else you want to say about uh, Detain or uh, Deten? The real movie is in the watching. Absolutely. This is another, I mean, I, like, I say that a lot because those are the movies we tend to prefer. Oh, yeah. You know, because... Well, there's a reason why we love Fried Berry, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> like, the best movies are the ones that the journey is the joy, yeah. while the plot is also relatively interesting. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I'm not, to me, original is just a, saying something is original is actually that's not praise. That's a criticism. Yeah. Um, not that because it's bad, but because people are like, oh, it's not original. Who yeah. fuck cares about mm -hmm. not original? I, I mean, I care. But the act of creativity already kind of makes it somewhat original. So does it work? Yeah. You know, now granted, there are limits. Sure. Um, for example, what was that one that like fucking Michael Bay did that was basically the clonus, the, the clonus in terms Oh whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Island, which was just flat out yeah. remake. It was a flat out remake that didn't admit it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just sort of like, well, I mean, <clears throat> you just wanted to do the clonus experiment. Yeah. Like that's yeah. fine. You, all you had to do was say, based on the clonus experiment, yeah. and all the movie hounds would have been like, oh yeah, yeah, that movie is kind of shit, so go ahead and remake it. I, w I was surprised there wasn't a uh, Terminator style like lawsuit about that, you know? Uh, I believe there was actually. Oh, well, never mind. I believe there was. <laughs> never mind. There you go. <laughs> you hey. know, so there's limits. This, this is what I'm saying. But for the most part, to me, a, a movie should be like a roller coaster. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you know, and at the end of it, you're supposed to get out of the car and the ride's over. That's not the important part. Yeah. Uh, and this one, this one is 100% a fucking trip. Um, yeah. It is such a trip that I would, I would say that uh, watch it once and then watch it a second time inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I don't know if I can watch this movie like fucked up. <laughs> like, this movie is so screwed up. Already. Like, Fried Berry, I could, I could watch, watch Fried that Berry. fucked up. Because that's just like pure entertainment. This one gets so weird that I'm like, am I just going to be thinking about Like, I would be afraid that I would come out with like a fetish for fucking cars. <laughs> you know, like, that's, that's, that, that'd be my fear. You know, wouldn't that be the highest compliment to the director, though? It would. I mean, it would. It would. It would. But I'm like, look, there's some there's some depths of darkness. I'm not sure I'm willing to go to. Fair enough. Some caverns I will not explore. So, yeah, we love the movie. And uh, with that said, where can they find you, Count Jackula? Oh, you can find me on Twitch at Count underscore Jackula. And we stream three times a week on see i went against the script in my head and i fucked it up well you can find me on twitch <laughs> twitch.tv slash count underscore jacula where we stream every thursday and sunday at 6 p.m pacific standard time and also we are currently running a play test of the game i am working on babylon rising at one o'clock pacific standard time on tuesday and we hope to see you there you can also find me on Twitter at Counting Jack. You can also find the uh, game company I'm working with uh, at Babylon Games. And you can find me on Instagram at Satanic Jackula. Um, Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Or Blood Splattered Cinema, and I'll be there. Um, <laughs> Gotta love when your mouth fights you when you're trying to talk. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, then be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, then even a dollar a month can go a long way. And I totally know what you mean. Sometimes when you have like the script of what you were gonna say in your head, and you go off that yeah, script, you go a little you off just, it, you're like, you just, you just start stumbling your words or your brain just freezes and you're like, ah, what am I going to say? I totally understand. <sighs> what would be a good hashtag for uh, this one? Like. Car sex? Car sex. All right. Yeah. If you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag car sex.
Car, car, S E C K S. <laughs> that right, way, right. That way, I know. That way, Jack knows. That way, the whole world knows that you watch this vlog all the way through. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, we're actually going to record uh, more vlogs on a later date because uh, time just was not on our side today. So no, we only no, had time for had the a, one. Yeah, we <laughs> went to a concert yesterday. Kind of my yep. Hailstorm you know, and uh, Evanescence. Evanescence. Yeah. And the concert was great, but the venue. Oh, the venue. But fuck it. Mm. Everything was great with the venue until we actually got in the seat. And then you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like this, these, these seats are small for me. Yeah, yeah. You we know, like, are, I'm not a smurf. Like, what the fuck? A friend of ours bought us VIP floor tickets. Um, which sounded really cool. The and VIP lounge was good. The VIP lounge was really cool. We got like a free meal and it was awesome. Uh, and, and free drinks. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. But the floor seating, they did not the, social distance at all. No, no. And they were no. these shitty fucking fold out fucking like assembly chairs. Yeah. And we're sitting there going like, this is the one you pay the premium for. I mean, yeah, you're close to the stage, but like this seating is less comfortable than the fucking bleachers. What yeah, the fuck? Yeah, yeah, clearly, clearly. And you're like squished together and the seats are so fucking small. Jack had a hard time fitting on them. And if yeah. Jack had a hard time fitting on them, imagine a fat motherfucker like me trying to sit in them. Like, you know. Yeah, and like I was, and you know, to be honest in the VIP area, I was not on the median size. Yeah. Either. That had to skew a little bigger. And so I'm just like, the fuck? Yeah, this the, is VIP seating. The, the like, seat, the seats were goddamn miserable, but the show was amazing. Show was great. Yeah, like both bands put on a hell of a show. Like if you get a chance to catch them on their current tour, we managed to catch them on like their first uh, outing. Yeah, uh, for the tour, and man, they've got like one hell of a show prepared for everyone. Like. They, they they do duets between Amy and Lizzie. Uh, they got an amazing light show that's going on. Yeah, like, light show's I, pretty good. Yeah. I love the fucking stage that they set up, and they also uh, and they also uh, have a great set list. Um, uh, Evanescence in particular, I wasn't sure if they were going to play a lot of their old stuff because I know that they've evolved way beyond the stuff that I kind of yeah, yeah, grew yeah. loving them for. Uh, they, they was a majority of the old yeah. stuff. They, they, they will play Wake Me Up Inside. So if oh, you're yeah. into internet memes, yeah, like, yeah, you know, but I was really glad that they did a version that didn't have the male vocals because I always thought that made the song unintentionally hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? And, and, work. and both bands sound amazing live. That's the other thing that is very much to praise. Like Amy's voice is great live and Lizzie's voice is great live and they just sound great. You know, sometimes you go see a band live and they just don't sound as good. No, these bands yeah, sound they, they great sound, live. Yeah, you they've know? really honed their sounds. Absolutely. Um, and with all that said, like, the, peace out, my fellow Gorehounds. Uh, hope you enjoyed our uh, little detour into the uh, concert experience. <laughs>